everyone, I'm Alana from Twinkle. Welcome to the Great Hall on Mount Olympus, home to the ancient Greek gods and goddesses. Because you are a good ancient Greek citizen, you know how important it is to honour and present gifts to the gods, unless you want terrible weather, your house to burn down, or all your crops to die. Lucky for you then, I'm here to introduce you to the various gods and goddesses and tell you a little bit more about them. There are lots of different gods, but here are some of the big ones you need to know. First up, we have Poseidon, who was the brother of Zeus. Ah, okay, sorry, I've made a mistake. The thunder and lightning can only mean one thing. Zeus is here and he's not happy. Probably because I wasn't going to start with him. Which is fair because he is king of the gods and he's the most powerful one of them all. He had the power to transform himself into anything on earth, but his favorite thing to be was an eagle. He's really powerful and really strong, but he has a really horrible temper and can be unpredictable, just like the thunder and lightning that we just saw. He's not a god that you want to forget to honor. To be fair, he had a pretty rough start to life. His father was really terrified that his children would betray him, so he would eat them as soon as they were born. The only reason Zeus survived was because his mother hid him away and wrapped up a stone in the blanket to feed to her husband instead. Okay, now that we've given Zeus the attention he needs, we can go back to Poseidon, who was actually Zeus's brother. He was king of the sea, and that's where he lived, in a beautiful underwater palace. So if you're planning on sailing anywhere anytime soon, make sure you pray to Poseidon for calm and clear waters. If he's unhappy, he can create storms and earthquakes. The pike that he's holding is called a trident, and he's also got a chariot which is pulled along by undersea creatures. Cool, huh? Zeus had a sister too, called Hestia. Unlike the other gods, she was actually really kind and gentle, and she didn't get involved in any of the fights between the other gods or between gods and humans. She was the goddess of home and hearth, which is the fire in the middle of the house where the warmth and heat for cooking came from. In fact, every Greek city had a public fire in honour of Hestia, and it was never put out. Zeus had two brothers, Poseidon and Hades. Hades is the god of the underworld, which was the ancient Greek afterlife. He ended up in the underworld because he and Zeus and Poseidon all drew straws to decide who should be king of where, and he ended up with the underworld. He wasn't very happy about this to start with, but he seems to have accepted it now. Down in the underworld with him lives Cerberus, which is a three-headed dog which guards the entrance. If you were kind to Hades, you might be sent to the nicer parts of the underworld rather than the not-so-nice bits. Now we can move on to the children of Zeus. Rather than eating his children, Zeus decided that they should all be gods and be responsible for different things. This is Ares. He's the god of war and he's actually not a very nice chap. He can be cruel and cowardly. It might be because his father and his mother made it really clear that they didn't like him at all. In case you happen to be heading into battle anytime soon, he's definitely one to keep on your good side, as he might help you to defeat your enemies. If you have a spare sword or helmet lying around, it's a good idea to present these as offerings. Another of Zeus's children was called Aphrodite. She was very beautiful, and in fact she was the goddess of love and beauty. Ancient Greeks loved to paint pictures and make sculptures of her. In terms of offerings you could bring to her, she likes fruit and flowers. She also has her own chariot, which is pulled along by swans which glide through the air. Ah, I've just realized I've made another mistake. I forgot to mention the queen of the gods, which is Hera. She's married to Zeus and she's the goddess of marriage and families. Just like Aphrodite, she has a chariot, but hers is pulled along by peacocks. I'm a little concerned that we might have upset her because she can get jealous of other gods and humans really easily. Did you know she once turned a woman who she thought Zeus was in love with into a cow? Let's make sure to offer lots of things to Hera to make sure she stays happy. Another child of Zeus was Athena, who was very clever and the goddess of wisdom. Because of this, her symbol was the wise owl. Athena actually gave her name to the capital of both ancient and modern day Greece, Athens. Maybe we should bring along some books to present to her. Another daughter of Zeus, he did have quite a few, was called Artemis, and she was the goddess of the hunt and of wild animals. Her symbol was the moon. You need to be careful of her. She's really protective of the wild animals that she looks after, including bears and stags, and would punish anyone that she found out had hurt them. She had her own bow, which never missed its target. 
but if you have any spare bows lying around with your swords or your helmets, that can be a good offering to Artemis too. Now we come to Zeus's sons. He also had a lot of these. In fact, some of them he sent down to Earth to become heroes. Heroes such as Heracles, or you might know him as Hercules. This is Hermes, and he is the messenger god. So he would take messages between the gods and also from the gods down to Earth. He was the fastest of all the gods. In fact, he wore wings on his shoes so he could travel as fast as he could. He didn't actually have a very good reputation. He was seen as mischievous and a bit of a troublemaker. He did invent boxing and gymnastics though. Another son of Zeus was Apollo, who was a twin brother of Artemis, goddess of the hunt. Apollo was in charge of lots of things. His symbol was the sun, as opposed to Artemis, who had the moon, and he was in charge of music, poetry, and art. He was a really talented guy. He used to play his lyre for the other gods on Mount Olympus, and he also taught humans about medicine. Although he could heal people, he could also spread infection and disease if he was upset. Definitely good to keep on the right side of Apollo. This is Hephaestus, who is the god of fire, metalworking, and sculpture. Because he was so good at making things, Zeus actually sent him down inside the mountain to become a blacksmith. He made all of the gods' weapons, as well as their chariots, their palaces, and even Zeus's lightning bolt. If you work as a blacksmith, you might want to put in a word with Hephaestus to help you with your craft. Here we have Dionysus. He's really good fun. He's the god of parties, wine, and theatre. In fact, he taught the humans how to make wine which is really important for us ancient Greeks because we can't really drink the water. We haven't figured out a way to make it clean yet. Dionysus was like Hestia. He was a very kind god and he was generous to humans. Finally, we have Demeter. She's the goddess of agriculture and the harvest. Obviously, it's really important to keep her happy. Otherwise, the food that we need to eat and to sell won't grow properly, and then we'll be in a lot of trouble. We actually have a lot to thank Demeter for. She's the one that taught humans how to grow corn. Once we've brought in all of the crops from the harvest, we should set aside some so that we can thank Demeter properly. So, these are the gods of Mount Olympus. There's actually a lot of gods in ancient Greece, and every ancient Greek citizen would know all of them and remember to honour them. There are also lots of stories and myths about the gods and also heroes. If you need any help remembering all the gods and the goddesses, we've put together these fact files which might help. You could turn them over and see if you can remember one fact about each of them. I really hope you've enjoyed this trip to Mount Olympus. I'll see you next time.